Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Rugby World Cup series. And as usual, I've got Elko with me again today. Elko, how are you? Hey, TT, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, good weekend of sport and uh, rugby, and uh, it goes on. It goes on. It does indeed. So um, let's dive into it. What was your What was your match of the weekend? Which one did you get the most joy from? The most joy from? Oh, God. Um... It's a difficult one. It was a bit of an odd weekend. I'm not going to lie. There were some um, some big old scores uh, that were there. Um, I think Australia Portugal was pretty good, um, and uh, BG Georgia was was excellent as well. And then we had a couple of um, shall we say mismatches uh, that um, yeah, there might be some questions after the tournament as to why that's happening, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, yeah, probably those two. TT, what what about you? Uh, I really loved um, South Africa Tonga. I thought it was such a yeah. physical game from start yeah. to finish. Uh, the Tongans really turned up, and they were just, I guess, I guess just a little bit outclassed in the end. But it was in terms of physicality, it was a hundred percent all the way through, and I really, really loved that game. But let's go back. Let's start from the beginning this this week. Let's go back to Wednesday, which was Uruguay versus Namibia. Now I missed the start of this game. And I understand Namibia had a good start. So talk me through from the yeah. beginning, Al, when I'll join in when I started watching it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think we, we teed this up um, last week, sort of saying that Namibia needed to sort of put some pride back in the jersey, having had a, a nightmare a week before. And um, in fairness to them, that they did. Um, yeah. uh, it was... Uruguay probably started the better, but um, messed up and got got an intercept. Um, and the movie got an intercept uh, early doors, and they were they were up within the first minute, <laughs> which was which was excellent and kind of set it, set it off. Um, and and then scored again, um, to make it fourteen nil. Um, their left winger, who I think is this is his third World Cup, how he's keeping the gas, I do not know. Um, scored a nice try in the in the left wing. So yeah, you miss if you miss the first sort of ten, then it was uh, wow. Uh, you sort of look at it and go, oh my god, because we'd we'd picked Uruguay as our as our favourites, um, and um, yeah, it was a it was a tough start for for them. Yeah, so when I got into it, Uruguay were very much on top and were scoring fairly consistently, and I just. God, I don't know what it is. It's something about the South American teams, I think. They just look so unbelievably graceful and balanced, sort of particularly in the three quarters and the way they run. And Uruguay are certainly in that camp. And they just they just look like they play beautiful rugby. Um Yeah, they're sh- they're sharp, aren't they? And they the you're right. They, they I think they want to play running rugby as well, which is obviously the whole mindset is it's a different shift. Um I'm sure we'll get on to uh, Mr. Foster's comments after New Zealand and, and what kind of game he wants to see. Um, but at the same time, it's not like their forwards aren't aren't going for it as well and, and being very combative up front sort of thing. But the try um, their fullback got in the right corner, the finish was just absolute quality. Baltazar Amea, he's he's a brilliant player, um, and that was that was as good a finish as you'll as you'll see. Um, but the, you're right. They they play a nice brand of rugby, um, and I don't. I'm not saying that in a condescending way. They 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 all the South American teams, maybe bar Argentina slightly, although they were they were good. Um, they, they play a lot more running rugby. Um, I guess Argentina. We've always said have an amazing pack and and scrum and everything else traditionally. Um, but actually, they're all playing some good running rugby. And I thought Uruguay, again, were um were were a pleasure to watch. Yeah, and that finish by the fullback, I mean, it was it was a bit greedy because he did have a man outside him, which he completely ignored to then yeah, just he dive into score. the corner. Which he had to score. Yeah, and, yeah. And he did. yeah. <laughs> yeah. that um, would have been some serious questions if he, if he didn't. <laughs> yeah, so Uruguay got themselves in front, uh, but it was still quite nip and tuck. But then Namibia got two yellow cards inside a minute, which was just like, yeah. I mean, it's sporting suicide really one of them which got yeah. upgraded to a red the loose head prop came on and whacked somebody in the head immediately basically and um yeah just a bit dumb i think uh, we, we 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 picked it again sort of in the build-up but sort of uh, for a few teams discipline is just if we didn't know it before the teams should know it now it, you know you go down to 14 men and, and, and 13 men you're in you're in big big trouble and that was the catalyst then uruguay just pulled away um you know if you've got an attacking side they seem to be able to pick, you know, pick where the gaps are and stuff. And also, 
we we spoke again about conditioning and and fitness levels and particularly you know a few weeks in you, you can't be playing at this level with with less than 15 unless you're England but uh, <laughs> it, it 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 gets you in the end but yeah or Uruguay ended up pulling away and 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 um won by 10 points in the end yeah good for them we love Uruguay uh okay let's we move did. on to Thursday which is Japan versus Samoa and I felt like Samoa were the better team in this game in lots of ways, yet they were pretty much always behind on the scoreboard. And I can't quite put my finger on why, but it, they just seemed to not get the rub of the green in almost every facet, I thought. Um, and again, it's one of those things, maybe it's just the way you're looking at the game. Maybe it's because I, so I fancied Samoa in this game a little bit. I'm not sure whether it's a psychological thing or whether that's actually true, but they just felt like, seemed like they were getting, um, I don't know, not the rub of the green. Yeah, it's a funny one. Um, again, we said it before that there are discipline problems, and they were they were they were getting pinged off the park a lot of the time. There was a lot of fifty fifties, I think, but I don't know whether the referees have got a preconceived idea that that or they've seen something that's happening in their in their analysis and things like that. But they. Um, yeah, they went. They 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 got uh, a yellow card there, nine for really stupid uh, off the ball thing. Um, on, on it, when they were chasing the ball back from a kick through, I think from memory. Um, and again, you know, you're you're talking, you know, you you lose a key player, um, in a nine, and and things start to to come off the rails. Um, and yeah, it was, I don't know, like even their set piece, I thought was 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 excellent. They scored some. You know, we spoke about this before. You know, traditionally you wouldn't have you wouldn't have said. That that was their strength. We always talk about Samoa has been running, attacking, and then very, very physical. And they've kept all that, but now they've added a set piece. And yeah, it was an odd one. That um, I mean, they were in the game the whole way through, but but they kind of got out Samoan by Japan, which was weird. Um, I mean, Japan got a their own uh, rolling mall try, um, and they had their own discipline problems as well. To be fair, um, but yeah, no, they scored some good tries. Um, I thought Lameki for Japan was immense at 15 so um i'm not sure his background is he is he is he got samoan or, or tongan I'm not, I'm not sure but he's definitely pacific Island. but he was up for it um and uh created a created a great try for um um did he did he set up um leech the old boy i'm not sure um but it was great to see him getting on he must be about 52 he's he's absolutely quality <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had another good game, and I was pleased for Japan overall because, oh, well, well, we love Japan as well. So, um, twenty-eight, twenty-two winners, uh, and good, good for, and good, for, good for the group, right? We said this, this now, mm. this now takes it to another week, um, which which I was hoping for, um, that now Japan and Argentina go at it in almost like a uh, you know pre knockout knockout winner takes all, uh, and I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them, um, you know, against Argentina. I, I'd love that again. Um, I, mean, I think it might be uh, Wales, Japan in the in the uh, in the quarters. And again, sorry, just to uh, bring up the tackle that Ben Lamb did on um, their number eleven was was hideous, and that got upgraded to a red. So again, discipline problems for for. So I think they'll rue their discipline, and that's something they need to improve on. Yeah, I think Samoa did improve throughout the tournament, but this was yeah, they just didn't quite get it in this game, unfortunately. Okay, let's move on to Friday. And uh, some people in the rugby world were thinking that Italy might have stood a chance in this game against New Zealand. Uh, I wasn't one of them. I don't think you were either. And, uh, well, it was an absolute hiding. I don't know the records, but I'd imagine this could be a tier one record defeat. I can't think of any yeah. anything bigger. Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a big one up there. Um, I... Yeah, this game really annoyed me. I'm not going to lie. It, um, and we, are we going to speak about arousal and arousal curves? <laughs> I was well, I can. was tweeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in my French accent. Um, no, I was I was tweeting on the evening. Look, New Zealand are an awesome team and they're great. Um, but this this whole like, uh, you know, they're going to win it sort of thing is, you know, Italy were appalling. I mean, I've never I I. I I want to think back to a worse performance from a from a tier one side, and it was just just awful. I mean, we had some big scores in some of the other games, but even those games were the the other team had moments. The, the defense was great, you know. They were putting their bodies on the line. People were just flying in. 
this was awful. I mean, it was a training run. It was, it really was. They capitulated. And if you get a chance, um, when we talk about the arousal curve, okay, so when an individual in a team is 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 too up for the game, their performance goes down. If they're not up for the game, their performance goes down. It's trying to find that little balance in between, particularly if you're in the close skill. I always remember from discovering it in university, um, the arousal curve, not arousal. And um, be, because I was a hooker, we're talking about, you know, close skill. And it was all about like, well, you know, you're going 110 miles an hour in the game. You just tackle someone or whatever, or someone, you know, you, you've had a row with someone in, in, and then all of a sudden you've got to just calm down and throw the ball in. Um, and Italy were way, way past, you know, they were, they were just, they were just almost stupid things to say too up for it. But if you look, if you, if you get five minutes, have a look at their number 10. Um, from the first five minutes, from kickoff, and just watch him, just player cam him. And I know he was a late change. Someone got injured, I think, and he had to come in, and then uh, Tommaso Allen went to 15. But he's just over chasing everything. He, they, they, they kick off, New Zealand play, rook, rook, and then they kick long, and he's back waiting for the kick. He catches it, and he runs 110 miles an hour into the first New Zealand guy he can find. And then he's chasing rooks. He's standing at guard. He's all over the place. And that, that to me, just kind of was like, oh, God, these guys are in trouble here. Because we know when you're playing against an amazing team like New Zealand, that if you overrun stuff, if you overchase, they're, they're just so good at picking you off. And they, they pick them off like, like no one's business. Um, yeah, it was very disappointing for me. I'd actually, I think I'd, I'd said that I thought they might do something. <laughs> Um, just because of how well they played in the second half in the last game and New Zealand weren't there. Um, but it was, I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, and um, I don't agree with what Foster said after. Um, you know, it's, for me, that's not a good game of rugby. You know, it's, it was pointless for both sides, probably. Yeah, just going into what Ian Foster said, he, I mean, he was basically comparing this game to the South Africa Island game and suggesting that rugby fans might prefer to watch a 96-17 hammering as opposed to a, a close-fought hard test match, um, which I think, I don't know whether that was legitimate or whether he was just trying to stir the pot or something, but it seems like a very <laughs> strange thing to say to me anyway. Yeah, th- 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 there might be an element of a little bit of um, let's try and poke Razzie. Uh, Razzie's come out and done Razzie things and, and you know, because Foster came out and said, oh, you know, the ball and play time was only 27 minutes with Ireland versus um, South Africa. But then I think it was only two or three minutes more in play that that New Zealand had, you know. But he, it's a, probably probably bad, two bad games to kind of make his point. Um, yeah. You know, that South Africa Ireland game was magnificent in, in every respect. Okay, we didn't have loads of tries, but it was a spectacle. Whereas this thing the other night was a, a car crash for Italy. And yeah, New Zealand ran in loads of tries, but yeah, I know what I'd rather I'd rather watch will be a close game and and um, you know frankly I don't care how long the balls in play but yeah you're right he, he could be just doing a little bit of um, razzy poking. Yeah, I think so. Um, now just a note on this game actually I I didn't I don't think New Zealand made an error until the 30th minute of this game and by then they were so far ahead that you know it, it made little difference but they were although as you sort of pointed out the Italian failings New Zealand were actually very 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 ruthless as well so um it was definitely a top performance were, from then no question they they were ruthless I, I don't I, I posted the stat of the tackle count and the tackle counts were pretty much the same I think it was 112 <laughs> versus 120 and you think hang on how can the tackle count be the same well it's the same because they weren't tackling they weren't making any tackles it was it was ridiculous and they they missed uh 35 percent or something for tackles yeah, look, New Zealand are amazing. They're going to win the World Cup. Great, blah, blah, blah. But, but Italy needs to pull their socks up. I'm a bit annoyed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's move on to Saturday and the South American derby, which um, I didn't see. I've seen the highlights. Uh, and it looked to me from the highlights that um, like it looked like it was a very competitive game for quite a while. But Argentina probably just sort of outpowered Chile in the end. Is that is that what you got from it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and this goes back to what I was saying, uh, you know, previously, you know, it, it, they ended up losing by quite a big score, but it was competitive, you know, um, Chile, Chile were, were were fighting the whole way through and making tackles and, and going at Argentina and, and stuff like that, but, you know, eventually class tells, 
uh, power tells, and, and it was a real kind of story of how powerful the Argentinians were. Um, they they just she, once they got sort of five meters out, Chile couldn't deal with with what they had, um, and be that either pick and go, pick and go, pick and go, or or sort of um, line out more, um, which they got one or two from, and then in the last 15, 20 minutes, then Argentina. You know, just started to score some really nice class tries outside. You know, they're, 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 that young fullback that played was was looked really good. Um, they made quite a few changes, um, and um, yeah, for me, it was a big story of of just Puma power. Um, uh, but you can't, but like, you know, the Chile guys can come off that pitch and and be really proud of what what they did. You know, it was it was a clo- pretty close in the first sort of opening 20 minutes um and you couldn't you couldn't say that they didn't have pride in the jersey that's that's for sure yeah absolutely and there was um there's a lovely thing on social media afterwards uh it was the first ever south american derby in a world cup game and yeah. the chileans uh presented i think it's some kind of horn uh afterwards in the change room and you know they all had to go trying to play it and some some could some couldn't but it just looked like a really lovely sort of presentation and, and a bit of fun. So go and check that out if you haven't seen that as well. That's good. I want to say something okay, about let's move on Paris, to... but I won't. <laughs> let's move on to Fiji, Georgia, uh, which I did see. And I love this game. Um, yeah. It was, we penned it as what would have one day been a banana skin potentially for Fiji. But I didn't think that they were capable of you know tripping up over this fixture but they nearly did it was 9-0 just before half time with some long penalty kicks from Georgia and um and they probably should have had a try on the break of half time as well what do you make of that one yeah what what an epic game and yeah we sort of said you know do do Fiji have a, a slip up in them um and, and they they nearly did some would say they might have been on the cab all week after uh, their, their their absolute amazing games in the previous rounds. They didn't look on it at all, um, and and Georgia came came with the fight. Um, and yeah, that this kicker they have um, is it Nash Nashvishvili, um, Davis. Um, he can kick a ball, can he? My God, he was. And it, what what a we talked we spoke about the Argentinian kicker the, the other day. This guy is completely different, very unusual um, sort of. Uh, way of doing it uh, doesn't take much of a run up, but he can whack it. Um, <laughs> just missed one early doors, and then and then um, yeah, he was whacking them over from everywhere, wasn't he? It was, it was, um, they were nine nil up. Um, but I think um, you know Fiji eventually woke up and um, started to to play a bit. And um, I think we were both saying on 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 socials um, about uh, Botia's offload. It was just if you remember on the on the right hand side, it, they all swarmed to him. I don't know how many players were around him, and he, he got whacked. And then, ah, oh. oh, it's just sensational, you know. But they've they've got that in them, haven't they, to to just turn it on when they want to. But it was it was it was close. And um, which are you talking about? Um, the hooker hookers try that was that was given and then it's disallowed. Ruled, no, no, it was ruled out for a forward pass. Um, oh, sorry, I'm thinking. Sorry, I'm thinking of Portugal. Um, Oh God, yeah, 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 on the right hand side. Yeah. And uh who was refereeing this? Dixon? Not sure. Carl Dixon, yeah, I think Carl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah God. Um yeah, not my favorite. Uh that was I I don't get like everybody, all the other refs, uh, particularly the French, they let it go. And then, all right, let's have a look at it. You know, and I'm sorry, some of the French tries that they scored during the night when they absolutely spanked, um, I think it was Uruguay, some of them were a little bit touch and go. But the, the, his hands went back, right, from what I could see. That that, sh- that definitely should have been a try. Yeah, sorry, I was thinking of a different game. Um, and that might have completely changed it. Um, and they still, they still had a chance at the end, right? Um, when the clock went red, they had a break and the guy probably should have passed inside and kicked through and... The Fijian guy chased back. It's a tough it one to call that, isn't cramp. it? My, yeah, my initial reaction was that he shouldn't have kicked it. But then I've I've had that reaction before, and the ball, bounce of the ball's gone, and you know teams have scored. You know there was it was like three on one chase in favour of Georgia. So if a different bounce of the ball, and they might well have scored because it was a decent kick to be fair as well. And who's yeah. to know whether they would have had a better chance if they kept it in the hand. Maybe you like we'll never know. We'll never know, unfortunately. Um but it was a it was a great game. 
Fiji with a lot of errors, particularly in the first half. But um, again, similar to what you said about Chile, Georgia can really, you know, be proud of their efforts in this game. A hundred percent. They were they were they were brilliant and um, yeah, stepped up. Um, and yeah, yeah, just thinking about that that try. If it had been given, it was that could have been completely different because you don't know then mentally what happens to to Fiji. But they that's probably a good that's probably a good game for Fiji to have had now. Um, and to, to you know, guys, we cannot not turn up. Um, they've got one more to go, haven't they? Um, that um, the Australians will be watching <laughs> to see if they lose. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, and the last thing for me on on this game was I I think the Fijian tight end Taggy is my new favourite player at this World Cup. Like the size of him, the shape of him, and then he's taking tap penalties and charging <laughs> yeah. off down the pitch. I loved it, absolutely yeah. loved it. Um, I, I can't get enough of it. I would watch him every day of the week play rugby. Yeah, there's some great, great um, clips on socials of, of him doing that, and sort of, uh, I think Jim Hamilton posted something where they they changed the audio and someone's screaming "No!" as he's <laughs> taking the quick pen. <laughs> Fair play to him. Then up he goes, charging off. Uh, right, OK, last game on Saturday, Scotland versus Romania, which I was lucky enough to be in the stadium for. A proper party mm. atmosphere in Lille. Uh, the Scots were out in force and the stadium, I think, was pretty much full, which was amazing for, for a fixture like this. Um, uh, sadly, the game didn't really live up to it. After about 20 minutes, the Romanians just couldn't keep up with the pace. They battled really hard and, and were full of bravery and all that kind of stuff, but Scotland just moved the ball and moved the ball and moved the ball, kept changing the point of contact and Romania just couldn't keep up in the end and, and the gaps opened and Scotland were really good actually at, at exploiting them to be fair. So there was some, there's some great tries to be scored to be honest. Yeah, I was, I, I, I was really impressed with, with Scotland. You know, they, they, um, we, we sort of said that they're a dangerous team and they made some changes um, uh, which will probably lead to a bit of a, a few conundrums for for Gregor as he as he picks for the for the game uh, coming up uh, this weekend. Um, and again, the, the, you know, okay, Romania were nil, but I I I I still have massive respect for them. Like they they did put it in. No one was shirking stuff. The the gap is just is just too big. And and bearing in mind, and we we've already said this. You know, they were they aren't even meant to be at this World Cup, right? So um, they they came in because someone else got disqualified. Um, and also, that was they made loads of changes. That, that you know, that, that was that was a very different team that, that played Ireland because they are looking at their last game as as something that they can go and win. Um, so they are arresting a few guys. But you know, Scotland did what they had to do. I thought um, Darcy Graham was absolutely on fire. Um, and Willie Pickham against Ireland. That's, that's an interesting one. I hope he doesn't. Um, I thought he was excellent. Four tries. Hamish, Hamish Watson was absolutely looking to. Abs- you kill people. Um, <laughs> he play he plays like he's, you know, uh, a six foot nine South African second row, doesn't he? He's he he does not care. He's brilliant, brilliant athlete. Um, and interestingly, um, Ben Healy, um, f- who is um, a monster boy, um, born in Tipperary, I think, um, who couldn't get a couldn't get a go with with Ireland and 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 moves. I think his mom, I think his sister, I might be wrong. Um, I thought he was absolutely superb, um, particularly in the second half when he was taking the ball to the line and and sort of just making a little half gap, knowing that someone would be there for the offloads. Um, and he got a try as well. But Scotland have really, you know, did what they had to do, um, went after a big points difference, and it makes um, this weekend uh, very interesting. Yeah. And uh, you've picked out exactly the th- same three players that I've got noted down here as well from Scotland. Uh, those three were outstanding. And Ben Healy as well kicked, I think it was 100% off the tee. Or he he did, yeah. Got like, yeah. yeah, which is amazing. Like Helps like when you 11. score in the post, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, t- <laughs> true. A lot of them were under the sticks, long range tries. That is true. Uh, but 84 nil, And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of fun to be in the stadium for that one, for sure. Uh, Sunday. Australia versus Portugal, and I was in Bar Australia in Lille, uh, oh, which had very, few, which had very, very few Australian supporters in it. Oh, good. Every time, good. every time Portugal did something well, like the whole place erupted. It was amazing fun, <laughs> and um, 
and and they got a bloody nose at the start as well. Portugal with the um, well, Australia went three 0 up, but then Portugal got a try, and um, they were just playing like this, uh, similar to what we said about the South Americans, just free flowing, attractive rugby, and just going for it, just like really, really playing and playing and playing, and it was amazing to watch. Yeah, so this one I missed the start of this because uh, <laughs> I, I was watching them um, the Ryder Cup and and just mistimed it and. Uh, <laughs> They yeah they they were they were up and playing very well and, and I sort of text you to say oh where and then and then uh, you you text me to say can you please stop watching because then as soon as I started watching Australia came right back into it um scored scored a try under the post and then got a got a, a maul in the in the top left hand corner but uh, I didn't switch it off unfortunately for for Portugal no it was um Portugal were, were quality weren't they uh, again another great team to watch and and play with with uh you know, a real hunger to move the ball. And um, yeah, I thought, I thought it was a cracking game. But again, it comes down to just te- teams to have that power can just, you know, as soon as they get an entry into the 22, then they they tend to score. And, and you know, it's all looking at the stats it's about the visits and Australia were just too too good in the line out uh, more um, to get over. But there was a, this is the one I was talking about, wasn't it? That, that, uh, that the hooker, uh, scored, but then knocked on. Um, yeah, and yeah. then I, I, I thought that was a penalty try, um, personally. But um, maybe they couldn't prove at the time. Um, I was looking at the guy that made the tackle, not the guy that took down the mall. The guy that actually tackled him on the line. It looked like oh, he, okay. he whacked the ball forward. But anyway, um, but you know, I, Portugal and and Uruguay have been probably my favourites um, in the tournament so far. Yeah, it was a lot of fun this game and Portugal getting a well they actually they could have scored a two or three more uh before the end. Like they made some cracking breaks and just didn't quite finish them off. But they did get another one, so it did finish 34-14, which seemed like a fair result in the end. Yeah, and that last one they got, you must have loved the scrum. Um they absolutely nailed Australia and just drove them right up, popped up. I would love that. It was great. Um they'll be hitting machines all week. And then yeah, they scored in the corner. But um as as we kind of predict, Australia just a bit too too powerful, um, and now um, they just got to wait for uh, the weekend. They got to stay together for a whole week and hope that um, the results go their way. That'd be funny, wouldn't it, if it, if they got through to the um, quarters? It'd be incredible. It'd be incredible. But we'll talk about that in the next show. Uh, hmm. Last game, last game for this one this week south africa v tonga which as i said at the top of the show was actually my favorite game of this weekend i just thought it was so physical i thought it was enthralling i thought um <clears throat> there was lots of really sort of good attractive play in there as well um and ultimately south africa just had a bit too much class for tonga just had a bit too much togetherness to cohesion um and they won out they won fairly comfortably in the end i think i can't remember what the score was but it was 49-18, I think, yeah. I mean, yeah. Again, it's it's one of those where you kind of know what's going to happen, but Tonga battled and made it difficult for South, South Africa. Um, they got that great, the captain got that great try just before, before halftime and driver, but you kind of knew it was, it was, it was always coming, but, you know, uh, Razzie is, you know, backed his selections and, and brought Pollard in, who I thought looked actually very good. Um, and um, kicked his goals uh, again. Some easy ones, but but um, still looked looked to have rhythm. And he picked um, he backed his you know picking Fury at um, a hooker who I thought had a pretty decent game. Threw in pretty well, um, uh, and then <laughs> and then brought on an, uh, another guy who'd never played hooker at inch, ever I think, um, and and chucked him in, and he looked all right to be fair. So. He's obviously not budging on his on what he's going to do, Racine. Um, he, he's backing his decisions, but um, yeah, I thought they looked. You know, if you looked looked at every time they cut away to um into the crowd, you need Faf and a few of the other guys. You know that they'd rested. You know, South Africa are um singing. I think they're going to be very tough to beat going forward. Yeah, and their player that I'd pick out from this game was um Dwayne Vermeulen. Like his tackling was absolutely spiteful in this game like I know he's yeah. always a big physical presence but there was something extra in the way he was going at it in this game I think he was really you know I think he's worried that he might not get a starting spot if everybody's fit 
And it looked like that to me. It looked like he was fighting for a place to me. Yeah, well, he was he was in the stands watching Ireland, right? So b- beside um, the coaching staff, um, yeah, I, I think you're right. And I thought he played really well. He 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 was clearly trying to make a point. Um, whether he's done enough is a is another another uh, you know thing. At all. Did you did you see the the clip that um, has come out of South Africa? Bernard Jackman had posted it around. Um, it was Nick Mallet um, talking about battle stats? No, no. So they, they apparently, how they select, they, they it's all done on stats. So they've got um, analysts looking at the guys playing all the time. And the, the, it's basically um, how many positive sort of impacts you have within a game, um, be that turnover tackle, but then, and then how you follow that up. But it's all done on the timing of it. So if you do one, then how long before you do the next one? How long before you do the next one? And um, apparently uh, it was a, Quagger Smith is has got the highest stats. That's why he's there. Because a lot of people say he's quite unfashionable. That they don't, you know, he, he isn't like you, uh, a good-looking player uh, in that sense. But um, he is. His stats are just phenomenal, and, and apparently that's what they're building up. So maybe that's why Vermeulen was was trying to make as much impact as as possible to try and get back in. But um, yeah, they were. They, it was a cracking game. Um, Tonga uh, again um, should be proud of, of of how they played and, and what they did. Um, Poor old Piotr, I'd say, is probably going for an operation. You, that that knee looks not right. Um, you know, he's strapped up heavily, but was still was still class. Um, but South Africa just too strong, too big, too powerful. Yeah, just picking up on what you said about the uh, Tongan captain Ben Tamiafuna. Sometimes people get a captaincy, and it can weigh heavily on shoulders and all this kind of stuff. But it looks like he's absolutely reveling in that captaincy. Like the try he scored was amazing. Like it was a good sort of. Well, let's call it twenty meters, shall we? Seeing as it's uh, <laughs> after the game, uh, but he did. He, he like he smashed through tackles, and like he, you know, he's a big guy, and he does that sometimes. But it looked like he was really energized by the captaincy, which is which is nice to see. Yeah, it goes back back to sort of our chats around psychology and stuff, and and when players believe, you know, all of a sudden they can find an extra five percent in the tank, and he, he went long into the game. Um, and probably played longer than he normally does, but because he's captain, he probably feels he needs to, and 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 somehow, um, you know, finds it. I thought I thought he was he was really good, really good. Yeah, absolute icon as well with the size of him. I love him. Um, okay, Please. we'll bring this one to a close. Uh, people at home, what do you think? Uh, have we missed anything during this week's uh, run through? This week's analysis. Love to hear your thoughts down below. Uh, and while you're down there, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on all the daily vlogs that I'm doing out here in France, uh, taking you into the stadiums, the fan zones, the pubs, the bars, everywhere, uh, and really enjoying myself, to be honest. Uh, and until next week, get out and play.